Oh, nice. Would you look at that? They are perfect. Perfect. A few days later. All right, so let's check on these again. What? Wait. What the hell happened? It was only gone a couple days. What is this? What is this? I mean, seriously, not okay. I'm gonna need a minute. If you have not encountered this as a candle maker, you're either new or lying. It is one of the most frustrating aspects for us candle makers. Why can't anything just look as good later as it did at first? I don't know. My wife's probably asking that same question every single day. It is what it is. The longer I sit, the worse I get. Just like candles. Ooh, that's good. That is good. But in all seriousness, the issue I'm referring to today is, of course, the issue of jar adhesion or AKA wet spots. This is where the wax and the side of the jar, just something doesn't look right. It just doesn't look consistent. So today we're gonna to talk about that phenomenon. And I put phenomenon in quotes because it's really not a phenomenon. It's actually quite easy to explain why this happens. But the question isn't just what is it, it's what causes it. And is it a problem or does it impact anything? And is there anything you can do about it? Also, if you wanna catch any other videos here on the channel, don't forget to subscribe to the channel below and give this video a thumbs up if you'd like to as well. It helps me help you. Okay, so let's first just answer the question of the title of this video in a nutshell. Jar adhesion and wet spots. Is it a big deal? Yes and no, but mostly no. And I'll explain that as we go along here. But let's start with more specifically, what is it? Especially to anyone that is new to candle making. Well, as I mentioned earlier, when you pour a candle, the wax fills that jar and at first it's a liquid so it's filling the jar rim to rim top to bottom side to side and everything just looks looks great well as the wax cools parts of that wax stick to the side of the jar and others kind of pull away a little bit and this unevenness of this jar adhesion causes what's called wet spots really it's just where the wax and the side of the jar just don't look the same all the way around part of the jar and the wax look one way and then if you turn the jar around a little bit it looks a little bit different and it gets the name wet spot because where the wax is pulled away a little bit it's just a fragment tiny bit of air trapped in between the jar and the wax but it looks kind of like it's wet it looks like a wet spot so what causes wet spots well there's a number of things that contribute to it but essentially it's basically as i talked about where the wax is just as the wax cools, it shrinks. And when wax shrinks, it pulls away from the jar. And some waxes shrink more than others, which is why some waxes have less jar adhesion issues than others. And even that has pros and cons. In my experience, for example, I would prefer a wax either have perfect, 100% perfect jar adhesion or really no jar adhesion at all. I, if it's going to shrink and pull away from the jar, I'd rather all of it do it consistently. For me, it's the middle ground that people have a problem with. And as I just said, certain waxes, have more of an issue with jar adhesion than others. Typically your harder waxes or firmer waxes, because as they cool, they contract and constrict more. As you know, hot things expand and cold things contract. Well, the hotter a wax is or the certain type, certain waxes expand more than others when they're hot, which means they shrink more when they're cooled. There are some waxes that are very soft all the time, and so they never really get that firm. And so they do have an easier ability to kind of cling to the side of the jars. The other thing that can really heavily contribute to jar adhesion problems is the jar you're using. Sometimes the shape of the jar, if it's a very odd shaped jar, the wax is never gonna cool uniformly throughout. And so you'll get areas that are inconsistent. Or if it's just a taller jar than it is wide, you'll get a little bit more shrinkage down. If it's a wider jar than it is tall, then most of the shrinkage will happen from the side. So the shape and the style of your vessel can also contribute and play a major part in jar adhesion issues. And then the number one thing that really contributes to this is just change in temperature. And this is why this is such a hard problem to solve or to control, because even if you're working at optimal temperatures or conditions, as soon as the temperature changes around the candle, it's going to cause that wax, even on a very, very small scale, to either contract or constrict a little bit here and there. And so it might be in 72 degrees in your house, or in your workshop, but then when it goes to be shipped, it might drop to 65, or if it's during the summer, it might jump to 85, and then when it gets to a store or someone else's house, they might have a different temperature there. And all of these fluctuations in temperature cause the wax to expand and contract, and expand and contract, and that's essentially why these problems happen, and they're hard to keep away forever. So the next question is, is this a problem? Does this impact the performance of the candle in any way? Well, no, the short answer is no. It doesn't affect how the candle throws scent. Uh, it's not gonna affect the, the cold throw or the hot throw. It's not going to affect the way the candle burns um, or wick performance. Overall, it really has no impact 
on the performance and certainly the quality of your candle. However, performance isn't the only thing that candle makers are concerned about. In fact, the biggest concern with wet spots or jar adhesion issues is the aesthetics, the way the candle looks visually. And that is the part that usually drives candle makers nuts, whether or not their candle looks unappealing. But here's the thing, as candle makers, we can't help but notice this. We will notice the smallest amount of jar adhesion problems. It will drive us crazy to the end. And it's a stressor for us. However, the truth is, for the most part, customers don't even notice or care for that matter. It is very, very normal for candles to have these jar adhesion inconsistencies or wet spots. Go to look on the shelf of any store selling candles and unless the candle jar is opaque, you're gonna see these wet spots just all over the place. So you're not alone on this and the truth is, is it doesn't really impact the performance or the sellability. Is that a word? Sellability? It doesn't really impact how well a candle will sell. Customers like the design or the style of the jar and the smell of the candle more than anything. And like I said, you can't completely control it anyways. So even if it was bothering you and you were dead set that it was bothering your customers, there's not a whole lot you can actually do about it. Because as I talked about, changes in temperature as these candles move around, the problem usually comes back. You can do little things to kind of help temporarily, make it look a little bit better, make you feel a little bit better about it, but they ultimately almost always come back. If they're going to happen, they're usually just going to happen. Not to mention, once a candle is burned and lit for the first time, let's say it looks perfect. Well, very rarely after a candle is burned and it rehardens and cools and resettles, does it ever look the exact same way it did before they first burned it. There's always some aesthetic issues almost every single time after you burn a candle. And again, no one cares, that's very expected. Customers know that when they burn a candle, it's going to look a little bit different when it's done. 12 plus years in this business, and I have literally never ever once had a customer ask about the jar adhesion. What is that? Why is a candle doing that? It looked a little different. Never once. Candle makers, on the other hand, ask me all the time. So what does that tell you? All right, so I've told you a lot of different reasons why it really doesn't matter, and it's not a big deal, and doesn't really impact performance. However, there is an exception. And that is for candle makers who layer their candles. So you, maybe you're adding different layers for different scents or different layers with different colors. But anyone who's layering their candles, if you have areas of the candle that have pulled away from the side of the jar, you may have noticed if you try to pour in your next layer, it could actually seep down where that space was created. And it's almost impossible to create good looking layered candles if you're having jar adhesion problems. Now, there are a few things that you can do to try to fix this, but it's mostly down to experimentation and testing. There are way too many factors that can affect this to be able to tell you how to do it in a video. It will depend on your jar and your wax and really everything else. But if you're someone who layers your candles, you really got kind of two options. Either one, find a jar and a wax combination where jar adhesion just isn't much of an issue, or you can try to find that sweet spot where your candles are hard enough, like cool enough to pour your second layer, but not cool enough where they've already started to pull away from the jar. And that just comes down to testing and experimentation. And that's part of the fun of this craft is you just kind of keep tweaking and trying things till you find out what works. Now, if you're a candle maker who makes pillar candles, which are standalone candles that are not in a jar, then you will use a mold to make those. And that mold will help prevent this ability for wax to kind of creep down the side of another area of wax that's pulled away because a mold will keep it all together. So it's much easier to make layered pillar candles than it is layered container candles, generally speaking. Although pillar waxes are usually much harder and they contract even more when they cool. So there's a give and take. So I may have already convinced you that this isn't something you really need to worry about all that much. But if you are really stuck on, I want to try everything I possibly can to prevent these, then I'll offer you a few tips that may or may not help. So how much can you prevent or fix this problem? Well, honestly, it's, it's very little and the results you do get will often be temporary. However, with that caveat out of the way, let's talk about a few options you have. The first is preheating your jars. Why does this work? You are essentially changing the difference between the temperature of the wax and the temperature of the jar, which means they're going to cool at a more even pace, more consistent pace. And ideally the slowing down of the cooling will prevent any kind of shocking to the wax which causes it to kind of cool or contract too quickly. Preheating your jars usually just delays the inevitable. Now, I'm not saying that preheating jars doesn't have its time and place. It can help you slow down the cool if that's what you're looking for, which can help in some other regards. However, it's not a bulletproof solution to stop 
jar adhesion problems because eventually that jar will come back to its normal room temperature and so will your wax. But then like we said earlier, any changes of temperature, ambient temperature around the jars or candles will start causing some fluctuation, some expansion and contraction of the wax, even on a small scale. So it is just kind of a temporary delaying the inevitable. The other option is to insulate your jars while they're cooling. Now this is very similar to preheating your jars. The idea is to slow down the cool and control everything so everything cools at a nice even rate. And what I mean by insulating, well there's several ways to do this. Some people will pour their candles in the cardboard boxes that they arrived in um, and that keeps them everything kind of nice and cozy. You can put them in tin foil pans. You can wrap each jar with tin foil itself there's people that have made insulation like cooler boxes. There are people that will put them on like cooling racks. Really anything to help kind of control the, the cooling process. However, as I mentioned about preheating your jars, the effects of this are usually just temporary. <laughs> so what, what can you do? Is there, is there anything you can do? I would say your best bet is probably experimenting with the pour temperature that you pour your candles at. So the temperature of the wax when you're pouring your jars, when you're pouring your candles. For most waxes, not all, but most waxes, the cooler you can pour your wax into your jar effectively without introducing other problems, the better you will be. If you are having these issues and normally pour your candles around 150, try 140. See if you can do it. Some waxes won't let you go too low just because of their own melt point. They'll start to kind of harden up on you before you can pour it. But go as low as you can and see what results you get. The reason this works is again, you are minimizing the difference and the temperature between the wax and the jar. So how does this differ from the previous example of preheating your jars? Well, they're kind of the opposite. With preheating your jars, you're heating up the glass, but you've changed nothing about the wax. While that wax is still expanded uh, because it was heated up and it's still going to contract until it's firm, until it's hard. If you are adding your wax at a lower temperature to begin with, that means it's going to shrink less. It's not as hot as the wax you put in previously. So the lower temperature that you pour your wax means the less overall it will shrink or contract once it's in the jar. Less contraction means less wax pulling away from the side of the jar. In other words, this is your best bet to allow for the most natural jar adhesion. And honestly, if this doesn't get you all the way there, this doesn't get you the results you're after, it's probably just not meant to be. <laughs> a note for clarification though, not all waxes should be poured at low temperatures. There are a lot of palm, paraffin, and coconut waxes that much prefer hot heat. Hot heat higher temperatures, much prefer high temperatures when you're pouring your candles. And so this really is an effective solution for those kind of waxes. So whatever wax you're using, be sure to test this and document. In fact, I always recommend that anyway. So if you wanna try little things, little changes to see if you get better results, every time you make a change, document what the change was and then what the impact was. Did it help, did it not? And you might find out that you find a sweet spot that makes everything just work great. And if you find that sweet spot, do everything in your power to try to control the variables and, and repeat that process every time. And you might find out that nothing really worked. And if that's the case, you're really only left with two options. You can change your jar. If it's an odd shaped jar or a jar that's just giving you a lot of fits, you can try changing your jar up to something that's a little simpler. And maybe not just a simpler jar, but you can eliminate this problem entirely if you just go with a colored jar, like an opaque jar that you can't see wax, like these white ones or these black ones up above me. Who cares? You can't see it. And you would not even notice if there was a jar adhesion issue. So that's always an option. All right, so the only other option you really have then is to change your wax. And this is the most extreme option. So my recommendation here is, if you're happy with everything else about your wax and performance, I probably wouldn't change it just for jar adhesion problems. However, there are waxes that are, as we talked about, better at adhering to the sides of jars than others. They are either just softer waxes or they just contract less as they cool. And so that is an option to experiment with different waxes. You can do some Google searches and, and look on forums or on this channel, I talk about some waxes. In other words, you can do some research to find out which waxes tend to be a little bit better than others. But I can tell you in all honesty, in, in all my experience, I've never seen one that's just perfect 100% of the time. I just, just never seen it. There's always a, something that can contribute to some jar adhesion problems. Long story short, there are some things you can try and some changes you can make to help control or fight this issue. But again, some of these changes are extreme, like changing your wax. So as I said, if you're happy with your candles in general and particularly your wax, then I don't think I would be looking to change just because of this. I just honestly wouldn't stress about it too much. Just accept it and focus on the things that, that matter more, that have more of an impact. Especially knowing that a lot of this effort you're going to put in to fix these things only might help and only might help temporarily. Like I said earlier, the longer it sits, the worse it gets. 
Actually, in all other aspects of candle making, that's that's literally not true at all. Because candles actually get better with time. Like typically they improve the longer they sit. But that didn't rhyme. So, oh wait, the longer it sits, the better it gets. It, it does rhyme. But yeah, wet spots might not show up for days or weeks or even months. And so a lot of the times you won't even know if you have an issue until it's already out the door. It's already in a customer's hands. They're already burning the candle. It's already on a store shelf. You may never know. And this is one of those things that us candle makers care way more about than do customers. Next up, check out this video where I react to other TikTok candle making hacks and tricks or this other video about my candle business journey. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe to the channel and leave it a thumbs up. Hope you guys enjoyed today's video. I'll see you next time.